What's up, Artemis? Welcome back to another fabulous show of Kicking It Real with Artem Alex and Lauren Danger. <laughs> That's my official title. Lauren Danger. Okay, so today we're going to talk about something not serious at all, and it's basically existentialism, but more concretely phenomenology and we're going to be tying it to our favorite thing scary movies which more applicably works with ghost movies i think but it might apply to all of them who knows So, Alex, tell me, what is phenomenology? <laughs> I will tell you, my dear boyfriend, Lauren Danger. Okay, so I made up a little diagram for to help me explain what phenomenology is because it's pretty simple, but at the same time, it's vastly complex. So, prepare to have your minds blown. <laughs> First, there is mental phenomena and physical phenomena. And that's pretty much all we're going to talk about today. And then, mental phenomena is our empirical knowledge, the senses. So, that'll be our eyes, ears, nose mouth, uh, skin for touch. And so that's how we get everything. People also say that we have like empirical knowledge as well as rational knowledge, but then everything rational we do by thinking and perceiving. Which is the same thing. It's not actually the same thing, thinking and perceiving, but all of these come from our experiences. And these experiences come from our empirical knowledge, as senses. And so, pretty much, that means our physical phenomena is extended from the senses, our senses. What does that mean? What does that mean? Exactly. Like, it's so <laughs> simple, but it's so complicated at the same time. Extended. Like, what, is that, what does extended mean? Like, extended. Like, okay, so you see this pad of sticky notes. Yes. I saw this pad of sticky notes, and so I pick it up. And now I can feel it in my hand. I can hear the paper. I could probably taste it if I put it in my mouth, but I'm not going to do that. So all of this is technically still empirical knowledge. It's just extended from our technical body. You know? So what's the difference? Like what's non-extended? What's non-extended? That's gonna be like everything that we're thinking about and so, imagining, but we can't imagine things that are extended. And that's the difference between object and subject, but we're not gonna get that complicated. So people pretty much could say that the world outside of us doesn't exist because we can't actually tell what's real because we can only see with our eyes we can only we can only tell everything from our empirical knowledge right we can tell things from rationality but all of that comes from experience and so what would i tell what 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 if i were to tell you 
But this is exactly what the Matrix is about. Okay, why is there a <laughs> bolt? Like a screw? It's got to be one of those things, right? Yeah, it's like what they put in the back of homies' heads. Oh, like the plunge thing? Like the plug you in? Yeah. That looks exactly like it, yeah. I was going off of memory. I hope that's what it looks it like. It looks nice. No, yeah. Now that you said it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's definitely not a screw. It's that, for sure. For sure. For I, sure. Was, I was trying to figure out what that middle bit was. The people who take the red pill know exactly that everything that's happening around them is complete BS. It's not real. It's not there. It's all figments of their imagination where they're plugged into a system that feeds them all of this empirical data when in reality it's just you imagining that you're burning your hand while you're cooking some french fries. It's just you imagining that it's a beautiful day out but you got a sunburn and like all of this stuff is in your mind. <laughs> and so the physical phenomena, the blue pill, is the people who just want to stay there. The ignorance is bliss sort of thing. Mental. The yeah. physical is like unknown. It's in the unknown. We can't actually prove any of it. What people say is the technical proof is that we have this collective knowledge and everyone knows everything like at the same time like you know that this is a cup too and so you drink water out of it but that could all be in my mind and I'm making you up and so of course you know all of the same information I do something about not having a direct like feed to a physical phenomenon you know what I mean like we have a constant feed for mental phenomenon constantly seeing things and smelling things and hearing things i know we're in our apartment i know my phone keeps vibrating i'm sitting in my chair at a desk like but um in theory uh i don't actually know any of that yeah so that's kind of like the next thing i wanted to talk about because how can you actually trust your senses but why can't you? That's the question. You can. You can trust your senses, and you should trust your senses. And, you know, some would say that it's rational to trust them. Um, but at the same time, you could say that you shouldn't. Or, like, I guess skeptics uh, say that you shouldn't. Um, so I guess I, I'm, I like to say both sides. <laughs> so it's like, if we don't know how we get it, it's also a very, like, Buddhist theology. Like, you don't even know how you would be able to perceive physical phenomenon directly. Yeah, because it's all extended. There's no direct. Right. You don't know what it actually, like, is. Just yeah. like you're not even a part of your own brain or your own arm. Yeah, like we're out here. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion. No, I I can't remember all the things, but yeah, no, it makes the most sense. You. So what I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> do was tie this to scary movies and ghost movies, in particularly. Um, basically, it's this. A person is in a movie, which is in our universe, and we all are rational and know what's going on in the world and know how things should act and be. But then something starts not acting and being the way they should. And they're like, is this a joke? Okay, so... For those of you who don't know, the main, like, premise, the main premise of Child's Play, Chucky the Doll, 
is that an old dude or whomever puts a soul a serial killer a serial killer into a doll his own soul his own soul <laughs> he puts a, a nice spell on a doll and puts his own soul into the doll okay so for those of you who also don't know there is a culture somewhere in the world who also does this in real life and um, the TV show Jack Whitehall travels with my father. They get to see all of this in action and they actually get to keep a doll. And it's so beautiful. Um, it was super fun to learn about. And surprisingly or not, the father treats the doll better than Jack. So that's funny. <laughs> we were watching loads of movies scary movies and came across the movie the boy which is basically about exactly that not at all like a chucky remake because he's not cute and boyish uh kid core uh what the kids would call it nowadays what the movie is about basically is you get this babysitter greta fully grown adult not like babysitter age um, and she goes to the house, and it turns out to be a doll she's taken care of. And so the old people, the parents, they leave, and she's left with this doll in this huge mansion. And all of a sudden, things start going down. Ghost movies, events start happening. had a number of potential nannies come through already. Do you think you can manage? Of course, the way. Allow me to introduce Mr. Hirscher. And this is our son, Ram. So, yeah, she heard, like, uh, pitter-patter footsteps when she was the only one in the house. And, like, her clothes, something about her clothes. Yeah, her shoes went missing. Oh, it was a peach dress, or a coral dress, remember? Oh, yes, the coral dress. They that, kept repeating, the coral dress. The coral dress. It's coral. It's a coral dress. So... There's a housekeeper. I don't remember his name. We'll just call him the housekeeper. He was a cutie pie, around the same age. Obviously, the love interest. I'm Malcolm. Hi. I'm the grocery boy. Well, grocery man. <laughs> Lead the way. There's also, like, you know, you know the an ex boyfriend that rolls in. A whole situation, a conflict. There's a story going on, too. Oh my god. So the housekeeper comes over, and Greta's just going crazy. She's got this chalk, and she's like, I gotta show you something. Okay. I needed someone else to see it. To see what? If you leave him alone, they don't give you a sign. This is like some kind of magic trick, right? It's not a trick. And she's like, he's alive, dude. He's alive. And the maintenance guy, he's like, what'd you do? What'd you do? How'd you do that? How'd you do that? What's going on? And so this is exactly what's going on. Greta is creating empirical data to prove that her senses are real. To prove that she's not actually going crazy. Right. I'm not just hearing things. I didn't just see something. This is happening. It's happening. She's very empathetic in the situation. Like, her mentality, as soon as she thinks it's, like, a haunted doll, is, like, this little boy is a trapped ghost. Yeah. And he has nobody to take care of her. Yeah, exactly. Like, she starts being an actual babysitter after a while. It's a very beautiful montage. Tell me about the real Brahms. He was downright strange. A little girl from town used to come out here. With they found her body in the woods. By the time the police 
arrived, the place was up in flames. France didn't make it out. Hello? No one's been out there for years. The ex-boyfriend comes to town and he's all like, I got you, you're mine, you know, you love me, all that jazz. And Greta's all like, oh, sad girl face. And she runs upstairs into Brahms's room and cuddles up next to the doll. And she's like, I'm going to take care of you forever. But I need you to do me a favor. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Brahms? Cut to the downstairs living room where the ex-boyfriend is. And, you know, all of a sudden, screams. Brahms did not do enough, if you ask me. He should have killed the guy. Just, just stabbed, right off cuff. Just right, just cut off his head some. No, he just wrote on the wall, go. Or Get something. out. Get out of here. And he was all like, you did this, Greta. You don't understand what's happening. People... They don't understand the empirical facts that the ghosts are there. The senses. So that's philosophy. The more you question everything, the more you understand it, the more empirical evidence you have, the closer to physical phenomena. <laughs> Honestly, though, <laughs> like we can't totally prove it, but we can if we have all of this you know, evidence, we can trust our senses 100% more. You know, you can go off your, your rationality, but she was going off frickin' chalk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the ex and Greta totally fighting away. Like, Greta's all, it was Brahms. Brahms did it. He wants you out of here. Get out. And ex is like, you belong to me. I don't know. This is a, a dumb doll. Jackass. Yeah, like he was very, like he was like the writers honestly went a little too far with how like possessive and like people are exaggeratedly abusive. But it was it was it was the acted out in a way that was a little like we get the character you're playing. Yeah. We get it. <laughs> and then he takes the doll and he freaking smashes it. Kablamos the porcelain head. And the house goes shaking. Dude, the and whole the house. Lights, and the lights in the house and every the cameras, you know. Very ghosty vibe. Where'd the hole in the wall come from? I can't remember. I'm, as soon as you said that, I was like, there, there was a hole. But I'm like, I cannot remember. And then all of a sudden, there's a hand coming out of the wall. And my heart dropped. Let I swear, Ghost, trip. Not a Ghost movies are somehow the best movies. It's all the screwing with your senses thing. That's like half of what scary horror and um, the other thriller. One, thriller movies are. Is like senses. Not knowing. What don't you know? You gotta figure it out. But you don't know yet. So where do we get the info? That's what we gotta figure out. And then we're gonna go there. And then we can get all this two clues, and then we'll put it together. On a cork board, maybe with some chalk. I don't know. And then we're going to go find the guy, and we're going to straighten this out. And that's what a scary movie is, is. So, a hand appears from a, a, a hole in the wall. And then he could have With been, a mask. A doll's mask that looks exactly like the dolls. Like Brahms. Like Brahms. The doll. That we know of. No that we love. know and love. So he got out and kind of became exactly like the ex. He was like, you're mine. You love me. You never said you were going to... Actually, he never said anything. He came out the hall and he was all like, I'm six foot two. I'm not a little boy. I'm very menacing and hairy, mature man right and now. Math. And I am wearing a mask of a little boy. And then he proceeds to murder her ex-boyfriend. Did he even, like, have a stabbing weapon? I feel like he had all means... Yeah, he had all means to, like, have weapons 
But I feel like he just he brutally he murdered. He barehanded. He just yeah. Yeah. So maintenance guy and Greta they go mar- go running. They found another secret passageway into the H H Holmes, and it was beautiful, but it was very dark at the same time. She finds this room. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. She finds like a weird body shape thing. This humanoid. He's like making her. <laughs> yeah, it was garbage, but with her dress on, the coral dress. And some of her hair. What? Yeah, she said that. She was like, is that my hair? And I was like, it's probably your hair. I would not doubt it. Yeah, and then there's the letter that we saw the old people writing earlier, but mm. that we didn't get to read the whole thing of. Bronze, you can keep the girl. She's yours now. They planned that the whole time. They were like, my child is a murderer, and we had to keep him in secret, and fake his death, and do all this craziness, and talk to a doll, and our child through the wall at the same time, is what I was thinking. Just put your kid in prison at that point. Music gives him so much joy. Brahms is not like other children. It is very important that you follow these rules. Be good to him and he'll be good to you. No offense, Brahms, but you kind of creep me out. You will be good to him, won't you? But I, we digress. Now cut to Greta in the, like, foyer, Great Hall, whatever. And Brahms, like, about to kill her, but then maintenance man killing Brahms and probably dying at the same time. He was totally going to bleed out. Um, and she won. She won. Right? Did she get the house? I say she gets the house. That's my vote. The H.H. H. Holmes hallways. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those houses so bad. Mm-hmm. I love phenomenology just for its usage in horror film writing. Like, you literally manipulate people's senses. Yeah, whenever you think you know something, take it away. The trilogy part to this episode, video, is... How to write an awesome, scary movie. But through reflection and basic analysis, this is the sort of ghost, not a ghost, monster, not a monster, and those sorts of movies. Whereas, like, things like Jason, um, I mean, I guess that is monster, not a monster for like the first or second one, but then it goes on to just be a monster, you know? Those are different. Freddy Krueger, very different. There are some really awesome examples that can be taken from the cult of Chucky. Um, Surprisingly enough, not enough scary movies that like I know and love are available on streaming. So luckily, I also really like very poor production value scary movies and so that was a super great time but luckily the like fourth or fifth in the Chucky series as well as the newest one um, with the new ugly doll who wasn't a fan that's available and it's great go watch it in the cult of Chucky we get our main protagonist she attempts to gather empirical data when it comes to multiple Chucky dolls ending up in the insane asylum that she is in. And she is melting the fingers of the Chucky doll and she's like staring at it so hard. And it's it's not budging. It's still got that awesome cute little face. Um, and so she's like, I guess, I guess it's not haunted, you know? 
And so she looks at the other doll. And so she's like, let's do that one. Because she's like, gotta gather all the data. Even though I feel like Chucky himself, being a total sociopath, psycho killer, he wouldn't budge getting his fingers burnt. She gathers all of this evidence. Um, but it turns out they're all Chucky's. Because that's the name of the movie. The Cult of Chucky. And it's a huge surprise. And of course, not to her. Because she knows not to trust any of her visual senses to tell her anything about Chucky. Because she's like, I know this guy's tricky. And I know not to trust anything about him. Don't have a stupid protagonist. Mm -hmm. Don't have somebody who's fumbling around through the story and you just kind of throw in your monster or your ghost into their dumbled flum path. Yeah. No, like, have a character who's trying to figure out what's happening around them. A good, smart protagonist is step one. Another movie we watched was from, like, the 50s or 60s with Vincent Price. The it's a very classic movie. Very classic. The House on the Haunted Hill. A ghost, not a ghost, movie. So, for one, the ghost, not a ghost movies are always brilliant because it's such a surprise. So we're spoiling every single movie for name dropping, basically. And I'm sorry. But, in that movie, the scares were so long. They were so long. They were like 30 seconds of just, or like a, a face that looks terribly unrealistic. So step number two, keep your scares super short. Yeah, jump scares. Jump, jump scares, scares are good. A jump scare, there are types of jump scares. There's like the fool's jump scare and the jump scare like the fool's the jump scare is like yeah the fridge where like the, you, you're like oh my god the, the fridge has been open for so long they're gonna shut it and there's gonna be a ghost and yeah, then from our and then experiences, we and, know this. and then or you're like or there's gonna be nothing and they're just fucking with me and then it's like the 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 husband or the wife and you're like god or whatever and they like they scream it's their reaction that makes you have the reaction a lot of the times. Dude, yeah, that happens. That happens in The Boy, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The guy, he goes and opens the fridge, and then he closes it, and there's Brahms. Spooky. And then he goes, and another time, opens it, and then he goes to look, and it's not there. Don't trust your senses, dog. And then you need, like, long scares, which gives them clues and then what you should do in the long run is be giving them these clues but all these clues should be all the things like in the boy where it's like oh this is a ghost or oh this is a cult and then whatever it is and then as you get to the end of the movie the ghosty things or whatever start shifting and start seeming like something else but your uh protagonist can't really see it because they're like in the situation they can't see that like oh the whole house isn't shaking it's just like that one wall and then as the truth is revealed that's when you as the viewer and i guess the protagonist you domino backwards through all of the clues and everything that's happened and all of these conclusions you've come to. It's also great when people in the movie don't make conclusions because then you think you're a genius making these conclusions. And then the twist at the end where all of those clues also point to what it actually is and it makes more sense. Like, why would a ghost need the music to be loud? I mean, I guess I don't know ghosts. But if it's a guy on the walls, that's why the music needs to be loud because you can't freaking hear it. So build a narrative, but have it only be just your own fa fault in your senses that you didn't think of the one other thing that everything pointed to. I guess if we're just 
spoiling all the movies we're dropping. Um, in the end of the cult of Chucky, we, uh, what's it called when you have mo- multiple personality disorder? <laughs> the guy with multiple personality disorder who was like, I'm Charles, who we are now convinced has been taken over and has been embodied by him. Um, which my guess was that he died, but I guess he didn't. And he wasn't Charles. And our senses were thrown off. Oh, and yeah. he was killed. Yeah, he was just... He had multiple personalities, and he was just acting like he was Chucky. Yeah. He was just acting... He was just taking on the role, and he wasn't him at all. So we were totally thrown for a spin, but I don't think the, the protagonist ever even had a opinion about it she was just like shut up (laughs) yeah i'm pretty sure she's seen uh what made us and the protagonist think that think that besides him saying that was like he fell in a hole and then the one girl threw a chucky doll in the hole you gotta make one thing is you gotta uh not want the characters to die yeah so that way, when they do, it matters to you in the, in the in, in the film. Oh yeah, we watched just so killing many. killing red shirts all day. Who cares? <laughs> we watched so many anthologies where pretty much there's no story whatsoever, and you don't care about the character. You don't care about the characters. No. Um. So you don't know any- like why anyone's killing anyone or anything yeah so like backstory the origins in the movie so would you say to be a good movie it should have somewhat like rationality in that it would work in our universe like to some at least a little bit yeah look like, Freddy would work in our universe. Yeah, you just have to, like, kind of believe in spirits. Yeah, you could die in your sleep. That's true. That's a fact. The way he makes people die in their sleep, like, fraud. Oh, yeah, like when know? he stabs you and then you have stabs. He's on the ceiling and there's a wall, a waterfall of blood. Yeah. I'd that's love to see, rational. well, I don't want to see another Freddy remake, but I'd love to see a Freddy esque thing where, like, there's some kind of weird way that they tie into the movie them going into like science of like subconscious or something the one that has the comic book guy is really good i feel like that'd be your favorite i don't know what the comic book guy is but mine is the dream warriors so far is my favorite freddy movie i think that's the same one yeah that's my favorite one that's why the scream movies are so good because they work in our reality it's that's pretty right much on. just a serial killer in an outfit. Yeah, and it's just a dude too. Like supernatural happens. I think like the most in a scream movie is that like the scream guy gets stabbed in a non-lethal area and survives a reasonable length of time <laughs> before yeah. being stabbed more times and then dying. Yeah, but that one is a parody movie. So in that movie, it's super. Everything is realistic. And so I guess we're not trying to be, like, you can't have an imagination. Every movie has to be on our playing field, our, our, not, reality. our reality, not that. We're just trying to say that the movies that take it too far. You're also making a different kind of movie now. So don't go trying to make a movie with the feel in the field of, like, this is screwing with what you think is real. It's like, because it's not real. Let's just go over to what's not real and then go live there for this movie. And not try to live in reality with unreal rules. Because it doesn't, like, you're, it, f- it screws with your brain. Your brain doesn't, but when you make a movie in our universe, but with rules and logic for a different one, then we're here trying to connect to that. And it's like you literally have a split in your movie between this universe and that universe. Yeah, so exactly. We're not trying to be awful critics here. We're trying to say, this is how you would write a scary movie to scare actual 
people. Yeah, if you want to write a short story that seems compelling and scary, this would be compelling and scary. I don't know if this is third or fourth, but for this one, it's... Scary movies need to kind of be realistic to be scary. Um, Ghosts are obviously somewhat realistic, but for me... I know I've been watching a lot of cheap, cheap movies, but the ghosts that are really ugly and not good looking or scary looking kind of are bad. That's bad. That's not good. It, no, yeah, like, like it's, I want to say like classist, um, but it is, it is crappy to say like you need to have good effects or else it's not scary. We're in 2020. You can't have just a person in white makeup with black rings and be like, that's a ghost. That's oh, a so ghost. scary ghost. Like uh, the black circles or dark circles. That ghost is not scary. She looked like an ex-girlfriend of mine. Yeah, they didn't look... That ghost looked like she just needed to take a bath and it like, was a normal person. And that turned out to be exactly what it was. She was malnourished. <laughs> no, she was actually... She broke out of a sing asylum. She yeah. wasn't a normal person. She's a normal person. There wasn't a ghost or a demon. Oh, yeah. And also, there needs to be a conclusion or the... Um, an open end which allows the viewer to draw a conclusion. And so, if you could somehow write The Village, where it ends without being just a cliffhanger that hurts you, but there's just as much evidence that it's all just people in the village, or there's a real monster, like, you conclude it with an open end giving you multiple choices. So you have just as much information to say that it's a monster as it's a person in a costume. So then you almost get two endings at the same time. It's not a cliffhanger. It's two endings. Because no. cliffhangers, it, it takes away... You almost become upset that you were upset. It makes you not care about things you were caring about. A good example of a cliffhanger is something like where... You see your protagonist, homegirl, kill a bad guy, and then, like, in the car, on the way home, right before the credits scroll, she's got the bad guy's eyeballs, or something like that. Oh, what was that movie? Oh. That was a movie we watched. I don't remember what it was, but anyways... That is an example of a terrible cliffhanger. Basically, why this sucks is because when you suddenly take away the the protagonist killing the bad guy, and suddenly the bad guy wins within the last five seconds of the movie, why should we care about her anymore? You just took away all of my... Oh, bad guy lost good guy won I, I liked her so much no it's gone now you, you took it away that work with that that works when you make the whole movie like Cloverfield when the odds were always against them when everybody died you didn't go oh what they didn't you don't save the day but in other movies when they all die you go what? That's not the type of phenomenology evidence to trusting your senses and fucking with you thing where at the last second in a five second little you can barely see the fight going on um the bad guy actually won that's yeah. not you didn't fuck my mind you wasted five minutes of my life the end of your movie <laughs> just have the bad guy win or have the good guy win but then in all of the movies well not all of the movies but like half of scary movies no one ever wins uh, for the good guys because suddenly it's taken away at the very last second yeah no if you're, if you're gonna kill all your good guys just kill all your good guys don't break the rules of your movie. Yeah, define rules. That helps. Because then you're defining the, the world we're in. 
But then you have to st- you have to stay with your rules. And that doesn't mean that you can't mess with people's senses. That can just be one of the rules of the movie. That's one of the rules of Chucky, and that's why the protagonist knows not to trust the doll that looks like a freaking doll. Um, that's why in The Boy, she knows not to trust the freaking doll that looks like a doll, but then suddenly it's not a doll, and it's great. Oh, that's why in Eli... Oh, we haven't talked about that at all. I'm going to spoil another I think I do have just a bias and just right now at least my favorite movies are movies where it's like like oh here's a here's a kind of crazy thing and then they're like oh it's getting crazier in a different way it might be a different thing we don't know you don't know nobody knows but it might be even crazier than this already out of place crazy thing and then you find out it's not that crazier thing. Oh my it's gosh. a way crazier than the crazier thing. Do you want to talk about the actual ending of that movie right now? The ending of that movie was the craziest ending of a movie, and it was great. Honestly, I feel like a good movie makes you want it to have a sequel. That doesn't mean that you need to have another story by any means necessary it just means that your characters were freaking invested or your your audience was invested in the characters and that they were great and rounded and amazing i would say maybe when those movies happen maybe it's a big part we don't notice it's just such a good movie that like the characters and the plot and everything even if that part of their story has been concluded it's all just been so good that when it's done you just don't you're like i want more of that yeah so maybe it's not even really like how the ending goes no no it doesn't have to literally point toward i'm gonna rewatch this and combobulate all of the amazing points that we've written here today but they weren't actually written, so I can't make a beautiful conclusion. But either way, I feel like if you watch enough movies, you will know what's good and what's bad. Yeah, remember, just try to like remember, if you just watch enough scary movies and you remember when you didn't like something, and just try to figure out why, and then figure out the inverse of that. Yeah. How to make someone like something by doing something else. All opposites of what you didn't like. Honestly, that's way better advice than saying, if you saw something you like, then do that, because that's copycat. If you watched a bunch of like similarly themed movies and just fixed all the things you didn't like about each one, I bet after 20 movies, you would just have a whole ass movie. You just have to write your... The story. The love interest. Right. The, the script. The conflict. If you've gotten here all the way to the end of the video, you are a freaking super trooper. Um, I want you to comment what your favorite scary movie is. And What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I would love to know because, especially if it's on streaming anywhere like popular, because I'm out of them. So. Have a great rest of your night. I hope you sleep well. And did you have any shout outs you wanted to do for yourself? No. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night and sleep well. And I love you. Bye. senses not knowing what don't you know you gotta figure it out but you don't know yet so where do we get the info that's what we gotta figure out and then we're gonna go there and then we're gonna get all these two clues and we're gonna put it together on a cork board maybe with some chalk i don't know and then we're gonna go find the guy and we're gonna straighten this out and that's what a scary movie is, is.